Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial and in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I thought in this lesson we would take a look at motion tracking. And I thought what we would do is I actually was asked a question about uh, an Animat tutorial that I just done a little while ago and the person wanted me to expand on it a little bit and show how we could actually have, you know, people or objects passing in front of text in the background. So I thought what would be interesting for this tutorial, and I actually have a shot here that I'm going to use, and it's a shot right here. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to put a title back here. We're going to blend it into the background, and we're going to track it, because as you can see, the shot moves a little bit. And once we're done tracking it, you can see that car passes through the frame. So what we're going to do is we're not only going to put the text in, we're going to track it so that it matches the background movement, and then we're going to put this car passing in front of that text to really make it look like it's blended in with the background. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt Tab into Avid's Symphony, obviously Command and Tab for all of my Mac friends out there. I'm just going to double click on my footage bin here. Let's just organize things a little bit here just so that we can see exactly what is going on here. There we go, very nice. And here is the shot that I just showed in the intro. Very cool. And what we're going to do first is we're going to drop this into a new timeline. Now, of course, to do that, I need a sequences bin open here. So let's just clear all that out from the previous tutorial. And I don't even really need the sequences bin to be highlighted here. But what I can do now is with the clip selected, again, T and the keyboard, both Mac and Windows, I'm simply going to hit B to drop it into the sequences bin. What we're going to do now is we're going to create our title, and we're just going to place it roughly where we're going to want it to go. So I'm just going to come back to the beginning here. Again, I'm going to navigate up to Clip. We'll come down to New Title. We'll give Symphony a second here. Now you can see that I have the standard title tool set to open and work with. Now, for some reason, you want it to happen to use the Marquee Title tool, but you've defaulted to opening the standard title tool, no problem. You'll remember that if we go into Settings, we come all the way down here to Marquee Title. This is where we can double click on that. I'll just move the standard title tool out of the way here. There we go. And you can see this setting is where we get in and tell Symphony whether we want to open the Marquee Title tool, the standard title tool, or to prompt you. There we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to type in, let's get our text tool here. I'm just going to type in Creative Cow Rocks. Why not? Because Creative Cow does rock. And of course, I'm going to use my favorite font here, which is Impact. And let's just increase the size a little bit here. Let's make it about 96. We'll make it relatively big. And we're just going to position it right dead center in the screen here, just like such. And of course, we've got a little bit too much space in between Creative and Cow Rocks here. So let's adjust the leading. You'll remember it's called leading, not leading. So all we'll do is we'll adjust that to be, I don't know, maybe minus 15. Uh, maybe even double that. Let's try minus 30. That's looking pretty good. Now, most cases, people might think that you'd want to get in and add a drop shadow around the text. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do that, but I'm going to do another simple trick after we've done our motion track to really give this title depth. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a drop shadow of 1. Um, you know, maybe we'll give it a drop shadow of 2, just so that it stands out ever so slightly from the background. I don't want too much of a drop shadow. Okay, so I'm happy with this title now. So what I'm going to do is simply say File, and I'm going to say Save Title. Of course, I'm going to be prompted to name this title. Now, if I had the graphics been open, I'd save it in there. But for the purposes of what we're doing, I'm just going to call this Creative Cow Rocks. And I'm simply going to say Save. What we're going to do is just close the title tool. I'm going to take this title. I'll just mark an endpoint really anywhere uh, inside the title. And I'm going to create a new video track by simply hitting Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac. I'm going to deselect all the layers except the one that I want to actually edit this title onto. And you see that I have my auto patching turned on, so my video automatically defaults to that video level 2 or video layer 2. I'm simply going to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to mark the entire clip, and then I'm going to hit B to drop that clip in. Now you'll see that this doesn't really look very realistic right here. Not looking too good. So how do we get in and how do we track this? Now most people think that we're going to immediately come in, hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac, and we're going to start searching for the built-in motion tracker. And they say, okay, well it's probably in, you know, image, oh there's stabilizer, but I don't see tracking. And this is where people sort of, you know, sort of the train comes off the rails. 
Well, in a lot of cases, what's important to keep in mind is that sometimes what you're looking for is actually right in front of you, and you just don't see it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to step into effects mode by hitting Shift and Y on the keyboard. Now, as everyone knows, you can all sing along. If you don't have effects mode mapped to your keyboard, no problem. You can always find it right up here in the Composer window, right down here at the top of your timeline. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to step into effects mode, and you're actually going to see right over here, I actually have tracking built right into this title. So all I'm going to do is I'm simply going to turn tracking on, and as soon as I do, you're going to see I now have a track point right here, and you can see that I have the tracking window open over here, right actually right in front of my preview window. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick something that I want to track. Now in most cases, what I do is I tell people to pick an area that has high contrast in it. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pick this corner right here. I'm just going to simply take the track. I'm going to drag it right up here to the corner just like such. Once I have it up there, believe it or not, I'm actually ready to do a track. Now we're just going to do some basic tracking here. We're going to get into more complex tracking in later tutorials. But all I'm going to do again is I'm simply going to uh, pick the tracking area that I want to track again, like I just said, and I'm simply going to say start tracking. You're going to see that my little crosshairs moves along with the track, and once it's done, you can see that those yellow dots, or it's kind of like a yellow sort of curved line, represents my track. Now, believe it or not, all I actually have to do is close the tracking window, and you're going to see now that the title has moved. If I step out of effects mode and I come right back to the beginning of my timeline, I simply hit play, take a look. You can see, and I'm, what I'm going to do here is just because I can hear this coming through my headphones here, I'm just going to come back here and hit play, and you can see that that Creative Cal Rocks is now locked onto the background. Very cool. Now again, the only thing you can see, the car passes in front. Not a big deal. We're going to take care of that in a second. But also, this title just kind of looks like it's hanging in the middle of nowhere. And I want to give it a bit of depth to actually make it look real. So how am I going to go about doing that? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control and Y on Windows Command and Y on the Mac. We're simply going to grab our segment mode, the overwrite uh, tool. And I'm just going to take this element. I'm going to drag it right up to the topmost layer. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to duplicate it by simply selecting the entire clip. I'm going to press Alt and C in Windows. That's Option and C for all my Mac friends out there. And we're going to paste this onto Video 2. So you see we have the exact same effect now on Video 2 and on Video 3. What we're going to do is I'm going to right click on this title. Now, of course, I'm using version 6.5.2.1 of Media Composer. And I believe that right clicking and saying edit title was included in version 6.5. So, so if you're not using 6.5, you're actually just going to have to go into the title itself and click update. But I can just simply say edit title right here. You'll see that I come in, there's my Creative Cal Rocks. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to select the title and I want to actually deactivate. I don't want to be able to see the fill, which is the white on the text. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come down right here to the fill color, which is white. and I'm going to move one step over here to the fill transparency selection. Once there, what I'm going to do is simply click on it and hold it. And I'm just going to drag the transparency all the way over to 100%. So all I now have is black as the color. And what this is actually showing me is the shadow. Now, you'll remember I set the shadow to be 2. I can actually switch that back to be 1. But most, what's most important here is I'm going to hit Control, Shift, and H on Windows, Command, Shift, and H on the Mac. And we're going to soften this shadow. I'm going to put the soften value at about 20. And I'm simply going to say Apply. And you're going to see now that I have this really blurred out uh, Creative Cal Rocks in black, which, believe it or not, is exactly what I want. What I'm going to do is simply close this title and say Save. You'll see what I have now is I have the Creative Cal Rocks on the second layer in the black sort of shadow. And on the top layer, I have Creative Cal Rocks, which is our actual, you know, uh, filled in uh, text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to Video Layer 2. Again, I'm going to step into Effects Mode. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to promote this title to be 3D. Once I promote it to be 3D, I'm going to navigate up to Rotation, and I'm going to turn Rotation on. And what we're going to do is I believe it's the X value here, which it is. It's the X value. We're just going to rotate this in the X value, not all the way around. Let's just rotate it to be about, oh, I don't know. Let's just do 65 for right now, because I'm going to park it down here on this driveway. What I'm also going to do is just grab the position and just drag it right down. Now, that's sitting on the road, which is a bit far. I'm just going to rotate this a bit more. Let's put it at about 85, because I want to be able to see it down there on the driveway. And what I'm also going to do is just scale this up a little bit here. So let's come right back up to scaling right here. I'm just going to turn scaling on. And I don't really care if 
we lose quality when we're adjusting the scale here. Now we can get in and just adjust our position here. Maybe make this a little bit lower. Let's make it minus 180. That's perfect. Now the last thing I want to do is I just want to, I don't need it to be that dark. So let's come down to our foreground. I'm just going to turn that on. I'm just going to put this down at about, I don't know, 60. Because what we now have is we now have our Creative Cal Rocks with actually a shadow that gives this depth. You'll see that I can come back and simply hit play. And take a look at that. The shadow and the text is locked in together with each other. Very cool. Now if I wanted to get in and blur that out a little bit more, what I could even do is just come back into effects mode here. And I could actually turn on defocus and defocus this even more. But I'm pretty happy with the way that this looks. So that means that there's really only one thing left to do, which is to have our car drive in front of everything. Okay, so let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down to Video Layer 1. I'm going to select the entire clip again by hitting T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows, Alt and C to copy it up here into the preview window. And what I'm going to do is create a new video layer again, Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac. And we're going to drop it into our sequence again, B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. And what I want to do is I want to navigate right down to that first frame where that car appears, which is right there. I'm going to mark that as my out point. I'm going to remove everything up to that point just like such. Now you'll see everything disappears and that's okay. I'm going to get the car out of the frame. Now the one frame that the car leaves completely right there. Perfect. Again we're going to mark an endpoint. We're going to remove everything else right down to the end here. Now what I'm also going to do here just for the purposes of making sure that this will play back in real time is I'm just going to render out this title. Because you'll remember what happens is, is that if you have a whole bunch of effects stacked on top of each other, as long as you render the topmost effect, you don't need to render everything. You can render just the topmost effect, and it's actually going to merge down all of those uh, effects that you've created into one rendered piece. Important to keep in mind, don't render everything, just the topmost layer. Assuming that it stretches the length that you need it to be. In this case, it stretches the entire length of the sequence, so I'm good with that. So let's just switch to the topmost layer again. And what I'm going to do is just park that car right in the middle of the frame, just like such. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get in, we're going to mask this car out. So it's going to drive right through the frame, and it's going to look like our title is sitting in behind it. Now what I'm going to do is hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac, and we're going to come back to my go-to effect. It's the effect I love to use all the time. It's got so many different uh, applications inside of Media Composer and Symphony, and of course I am referring to Animat. I'm going to take Animat, drag it and drop it down onto that clip on the topmost layer. Again, I'm going to step into Effects Mode, Shift and Y on the keyboard. Let's just make sure we have that layer selected. Let's get that car parked right in the middle. And all I'm going to do is you can be as, you know, obviously as you know, simple or as precise as you want to be. I'm just going to use the Polygon tool here just because I don't need to be super precise when I'm showing this to you because you'll get the idea of how this is going to work. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out most of this car here. Just kind of like this. And I can probably cut it off about there. And you'll see what I have now is the car in front of Creative Cal Rocks. Now, of course, you know, when we look through the window, we can see that it's not there, but the car's going to pass so quick that you're not even going to notice it. What I also need to do here, because you'll see if I step out of effects mode, that's a very hard uh, mat, and that would never happen, because as you see, as the car drives through, we got some motion blur going on. So I'm just going to simply add some motion blur here. Let's just select our Matt here. We'll just put the blur value at about, I don't know, maybe about five. Let's step out again. That <coughs> Let's step out again. Whoop, looking very, very good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is step back into effects mode here and I'm going to add a keyframe right there. Now what I'm going to do is just back up a little bit here. I'm going to select the animat and we're simply just going to grab it and drag it roughly where we want it to go. Now what's most important here is that we line this up right here. And you see that I can adjust the actual mat itself as the car drives through. Very cool. And like I said, we want to make sure that we line up with the windshield and the top of the car because we can adjust the mat just like that. Very cool. Now you'll see, because the car doesn't even actually uh, start to pass the Creative Cal Rocks until this point, I can actually remove the first part of the clip. Very cool. And you'll see there goes the car. Very cool. We get to about there. We're still good. Now, of course, here we need to adjust our mat. Again, we're lining it up with the top of the car. And I always like to raise it up a bit and then bring it down like that. Very cool. 
It's going to come back to here. Still looking pretty good, although maybe we need to back it up a bit just so that the windshield lines up a bit better. There we go. Okay, now of course we might not need the whole clip, but we'll just get things to roughly where we need them to go. Just line it up with that back windshield. Perfect. Okay. You see it requires a little bit of work here, but overall not too much. Okay, I think we're actually good to go. What I'm going to do now with this last keyframe that I set is I'm just going to copy it and paste it right down to here because we don't want that. Uh, actually, you can see we need to actually slide it down a little bit more because we have our shadow on the ground here. So let's just do that. Just grab this, position it here. Perfect. And then what we'll do is we'll copy this and we'll paste it right down to the end. Now, let's just drag through and see what our car looks like as it passes in front. Now, like I said, you can't actually see it as it goes through or as it drives past it. But that's okay because it happens so quick you're not even going to notice it. Very cool. And what I can do now is simply come back to the beginning of the timeline, hit play, take a look at what we have. We have a car driving right in front of our super just like that. Very, very nice. What we could do if we wanted to is I could get in. I could actually add another mat in here. And what we could do is just put that at like a 50% transparency so that we could see through the window and see part of that Creative Cow Rocks. Just to add a little bit extra level of realism. But to be perfectly honest, when that car is driving through really fast, you don't even notice it. Very cool. Okay, so I hope this tutorial has shown you two things. One, how simple it is to get in and use the motion tracker with things like titles. You have access to all the trackers that you need right from within the title itself. And remember, Animat is an awesome tool that has so many different applications, many of which you may not even have thought of. But take a look in this situation how to create an ultra realistic looking move without having to leave the comfort of your non-linear editing application. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.